Good morning, or good afternoon, I should say now. It's, um, it's the afternoon, and welcome to LVS Perspectives number 11, Blended Learning, the LVS Journey. Uh, if, just before we start, if you didn't see the online safety session for parents, that was in at 11 o'clock, and that is actually recorded now on Facebook Live, so please go back and visit it. It was, it was really informative. So moving on to today, we're joined um, here today with uh, Chris Mashane, who's from 3D Learning, and Chris is our, our partner in our journey into blended learning. Uh, Chris has been a, an, a head teacher in the independent school, and he's also been a head teacher of state schools. And he, um, he will tell you a little bit more about his journey as well. But he started his business 3D Learning a year ago. And um, he is very, very, very amazingly brilliant, I will say. He said, I said, how do I describe you, Chris? He says, tell them I'm an awfully nice man. And I said, you are a terribly lovely man as well. But um, he does national college webinars for technology for learning. So I'm not going to steal his thunder. I'm going to pass you over to Chris, who's going to give you a presentation about our journey and his journey and how we're working together. We're taking questions as normal so please either send them through the live chat or you can email them to me if you don't want to put your name to appear and you want a more anonymous question I have my email on on my phone which is here on the desk so I'll say no more over to you Chris thank you Christine good afternoon everybody I'm absolutely delighted to be here I was just said I was just saying to Christine that if I was going back into headship I would be stealing this idea I think it's absolutely fantastic idea to keep everybody involved within the school because parents as partners this is this is a real example of, of exactly what it's doing um, I'm going to share my screen now and then I'm just going to take you through uh, a, power, uh, a PowerPoint and then very hap happily answer any of the questions that you've got at, at the end of it. I have to say that our first um, experience of working with LBS, we had a really, really busy, really busy, really thought provoking day. I think at the end of it, both the, uh, the leadership team and my team came away absolutely exhausted, but exhilarated by the whole, the whole day. And I think we've made really, really great progress with it. And I'm looking forward to meeting up with the team again next week to find out exactly what that what that, that progress has been as far as LVS is concerned. So just let me share my screen and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get into the, the whole the, the process. So just, uh, just a little bit um, about, about us as a company. As Christine said, we, we, we set the company up uh, about a year ago um and it was a combination of education and, and medical professionals that came together to do that two two of the the directors myself and and christian are ex-head teachers and we we came together and got to know each other through our previous association with the group that schools group that we worked for uh two of the 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 ladies are senior leaders in primary education and our fifth colleague is a GP who is heavily involved in GP training and is a neuro linguistics uh, master programmer. Um, why do we set the company up? Because we believe that this is the time for change in education. None of us foresaw the, the pandemic. And when we set it up, we still felt we were a little bit out on the edge of mainstream in terms of what we were saying about technology for learning. Of course, now we suddenly find ourselves right in the middle of the, the education landscape and where things are going. And that, yeah, there's, a, there's a saying in Ireland, if you can't be good, be lucky. And it's very much a case of, of us being lucky in that respect. Um, and where, where our expertise lies is in har harnessing the power of technology to make the difference. We have a little bit of a phrase in the, in the company that says that, uh, technology, technology alone won't make the difference, but we can't make the difference without the technology. Hence that whole concept 
of blended learning. So what do we want to do with that? Well, we want to make learning visible what's going on in a school around the whole holistic learning approach. And we think that technology helps to do that. And in order that every single learner has a personal learning journey. And I think that's where in my teaching career, that's been the holy grail. That's been the thing that I've been after. Um, I started with e-learning projects back in 2001 in, in Lowestoft. And, um, and, and I've been searching for that holy grail ever since is how do we make learning personal and I hope this morning or this afternoon I'm going to I'm going to share that with you and um, some thoughts on that and how we go about doing that so as a company what we believe passionately in is working side by side with the, the people that we work with and it's really really important to us that that we do that so our job as we see it is to help LBS to clarify and shape future vision and, and where that's going. And, and we started that with that really great day a few weeks ago where we went up through what we called organizational neurological levels with, with the team, really challenging and thinking where about what they're doing and then what they want to do and, and where we're going from there. And that's shaping that vision. And it's an LVS, it's not our vision, it's an LVS vision for where the future is. And, and it's a really exciting uh, vision that, that Christine has, has put in, in train. So we're there to challenge and challenge the thinking so that it's coming out the other side, it's robust, it's confident, and it's, it's supporting the development of that change management strategy that's going to take uh, LBS into its next, its next iteration. And uh, you know, there was something that, that, that Christine said on the day that stuck with me, which was that where LVS now is replicating the pioneering spirit of its founders. And, and that pioneering spirit is still very, very much alive and well, and now looking at where that, that translates into the, this midpoint of the, the 21st century and beyond into the latter stages. I have it elsewhere in the, um, the in, in this presentation, but uh, four-year-olds starting at LVS this year will retire from the British workforce in 2086. The younger students in the school are most likely to see the start of the next century. And I suppose the challenge and the thinking around that is, what is their world going to look like? What changes will happen in that time? And none of us know, but you know, we, we, we know what we can do now to ensure that they're prepared for that. So the important thing now is to ensure that everybody is coming on that, on that journey and that the leadership team at LVS can take their vision forward, they can share that and they can lead the teachers, the students, the parents and the trustees into that future. So why Learning 3D? Christine picked up one of my webinar, webinars for the National College and felt that what we were saying there made this whole journey feel achievable. Because of, because of what we've learned on our shared experiences as, as we've gone through the, the process, the last role that we had, our organization wanted self-directed learning as the, the pedagogy and the practice for their schools. So we spent a lot of time looking at how we could make that make that happen. And we learned an awful lot along the way. I always say I'm an expert in nothing. I've just made the mistakes that there are to make and learned from them. And I think that part of part of the message in that is we have to be brave enough to make mistakes. We have to be brave enough to fail forward, learn from them. Um, we say, you know, learn, you know, Fail, fail fast, fail often, fail forward. And, and that's the way in which and we, um, we work with our, our clients as well, is helping them and encouraging them to not to be afraid to make those, those mistakes and learn from them and those challenges and move forward. Well, it's a space that we've been in, as I've said before, for the last 20 plus years. So what have we learned? Well, I've learned that I, I look at economic trends, social trends, what's happening elsewhere. I've learned from Industry 4.0 that we are now 
at the at the beginning of um, will change everything. It will change the way we think. It will change the way we live, and it'll change the way we work. And that that brings with it its own set of challenges. Change is exponential. It's never been as quick as it is now, and I don't think that's unlikely to change. I think that we we that's the world that we're working in, and that's the world that we need to embrace. So we need to think about the world that our young people are going to inherit. And the truth is, we don't know what that's going to look like. You know, if we look back to 1920, and then we look forward to the end of the century, and what happened for humankind in, in, that, in that time, it, it was enormous. And we're expecting that to be even greater as we move into this whole concept of Industry 4.0 that effectively is the, the coexistence of human learning and machine learning and what that will what that will actually look like. But the reality is, as I said before, we don't know. And so one of the statements that underpinned everything I did as a head teacher and underpins what we do as a company is this one from Jean Piaget, a Swiss uh, educational psychologist. Intelligence is when you don't know what to do, you know what to do. And if you think about that for a second, it, it underpins so much. And if you start to think about that statement in terms of uh, leadership, in terms of teaching and learning, in terms of curriculum design, in terms of, it, there's a liberation to it that allows us to really think about what this, this concept will be for young people as they, as they move forward. Therefore, as far as we're concerned, the future is a personal journey using a blended learning approach. And this is where we come to with, with LVS. So what is blended learning? Yeah, the, the idea is that we, we start to pick up on the world and where it's going. And I thought I'd just sh share this, this, this slide with you and give you a little bit of time just to, just to take it in. What are the key drivers of the world of the future? And we see that at concept of extreme longevity, rise of smart machines and systems, new media ecologies. <laughs> We're involved in that here today a globally connected world and super structured organizations. So what are the key skills that people are saying the workforce needs? We need to make sense of the world around us and that's really important. And we need to continue to do that as things change. I, I watched a, a video from the OECD and it was the French Minister for Employment that said that in the world of the future, there is the connection between the state, the individual and the employer. And the individual's role in that is to keep themselves employable. And that really comes back to that concept of self-directed learning, being confident to, to step out into new things. And again, that understanding that when you don't know what to do, you know what to do. But you look at you look at the, the skills as they develop, social intelligence, new media literacy, computational thinking, novel and adaptive thinking, transdisciplinary, cognitive load management. We know what this world is like. We have 24 hour, 24 seven access to everything, anything. And how do we make sense of all of that? And how do we manage our own well being within that within that journey? Cross-cultural competencies, design mindset, virtual collaboration. Well, certainly that one came to the fore in the last in the last six seven months. Um, and you know these these are the, this is where we have to think. If you look at if you look at that diagram and you say right, what does a curriculum look like in that diagram? What does a pedagogy look like to to achieve this? What are we doing with young people? What are we doing with our teachers? What are we doing with our parents to help to understand the new world where we go? This, there, there are so many complex overlaps in, in this journey that, that we need to ensure that we're making sense of it. And this is where blended learning fits. It's that space between learning in the classroom entirely and learning remotely 
entirely. And I, I think that this, this is a metaphor for life now in, in the way that we're moving forward. Um, and and we need to we need to define that we need to understand what we mean by it and then we need to build all of our structures and all of our competencies and everything that we want to happen around that and the remote learning idea because of covid-19 has shifted the way in which we think about this journey but there is something really important in it and this is something that's really important for me is people make a difference. For that reason, I'm not a de-schooler. I, I, I see the value of school. I see the value of school for young people in the round and, and, and what needs to happen for them. I think that, that the, the being with their teachers is incredibly important because you've got these people who are experts in their fields, who, who can take students beyond where they ever thought they were able to go. What the blended learning part of it does, it does some of the heavy lifting with the students to allow the teachers to make that time when the students are with them so much more valuable to take learning deeper. So this was this was where I feel that we've got this this blended learning approach that becomes something that we can all subscribe to. One of the one of the studies coming out of America talked about student engagement and Whilst they, they, they didn't, there was no evidence yet to suggest that you know, there was huge changes to academic outcomes by using um, uh, online learning. They did say that there was a massive uptake in student engagement. And we know that student engagement has a, has a proportional effect on academic outcomes. So we, they, they were saying that that in that study, that engagement in learning went from approximately 60% to 80% engagement. So what we're seeing is, is that this is something that's sitting well with learners. Part of that reason is because of the, the idea of self-pacing. It's because the, the resources are there, the resources are online, the, the students have access to them, the teachers are setting it up in the right way, um, then it's that, it allows for that self-pacing. We're not holding back those students who are capable of going beyond where, where their, their, their peers are. We're supporting those students for whom they need that support. We're making sure that we're allowing all ranges of learning to make that journey. And one of the things that, that I put lower down there, we're not setting limits. We're not setting false limits on students. There's a great, there's a great story told about um, putting a flea in a plastic cup and covering the plastic cup with clean film. The flea bounced and, and hit the clean film and it kept doing it. Eventually, they removed the clean film and the flea never jumped out of the cup because it didn't believe it could. We had limited what it thought it was capable of doing. So one of the things for me in plan, blended learning is this idea that every student has a personal journey. Every student can achieve whatever it is they're setting themselves out to achieve because we're not putting limits on them. It has implications for, for setting or streaming or whatever is in the because, because the idea is that there is a democratic process going on here around the process of learning. The outcomes will always be different for student to student, but that democratic process of going, going through the, the process of learning is, is something that will, will be similar for every student, even though they will be going off in, in their own personal directions. What it allows as well is to make richer use of time when students are in, the, in front of teachers. Teachers are responding to students at the point of need, whatever that need may be, whether that is to support them because they're struggling with concepts or whether that's because you're launching what I call a learning hand grenade at those students who are, are flying with the, the work that they're, they're doing. And it allows for everything in between 
the two of those. So I think it allows that learning to go deeper because some of the heavy lifting has been done by what you've put onto your platform, the students have access to around the whole idea of instruction um, for new for new materials and um, for new knowledge. Um, because that's because that's been flipped, because that's online, when the students are in front of you, you can really start to think about what their needs are and how to take those needs deeper and a greater level of understanding within within the whole process. It also allows for something called metacognition because it allows us to th the, the learner to start to consider where they are and how they learn. And by taking control of that and managing it, that for me is at the crux of that statement, intelligence is when you don't know what to do, you know what to do. And the way that I in the past have set that up is that drafting and redrafting work, um, learning experiences of all types is really, really important. And so the students can look at it and look at their timeline of learning and start to figure out for themselves, what was the difference that made the difference from their first iteration to the last? And where were the key points that made that difference for them? Because for me, that's where the learning happens. That's, that, that's the thing that makes this for me that democratic process. Each learner is beginning to understand for themselves who they are, how they learn, and what they can do to improve that for themselves. How they can go through processes to stretch and go beyond what they're, they're capable of. And the teachers are in the background at the point of need to help to support and challenge that journey. So there are, there are some real changes we need to think about in terms of pedagogy along, along the way. So what does it look like for the individual student? Well, we can see the teachers are setting the challenges and the technology, the learning challenges are delivered to the students through the technology and the students undertake those, those challenges. They submit their responses, they're reviewed, progress is, pro, the progress is reviewed and the feedback is given. The students identify for themselves their need and then they place themselves in the best place to, to, to respond again to that. And the teacher at the same time is, is looking at their own classroom practice and targeting student need where that might be. So it's a very, very co-constructed process with the students at every single point. And, and I think that this is one of the challenges that we need to, to look at in terms of how that, that looks for each student. We can differentiate better and the students have that personal journey. So how does the classroom change? There's a lot of self-organization going on in the classroom. We use the work of Sagata Mitra around self-organizing learning environments as a way to do this. And, and what happens is the students select where they feel they need to go. Little example of that, I had a, a GCSE um, citizenship group. I would put the challenge on the learning platform with all the materials, all the resources and introductory video and what that, what that looked like. When the students were first in front of me, I'd give them a, seri a series of choices. Who was, who was happy with everything they had online? Who didn't need me? They were confident they could go on, they could take this on for themselves. They went to a space, they got on with, with the work that they needed to do. Who felt that they were comfortable enough, confident enough to get started, although they perhaps may need reassurance at some point in the not too distant future. They took themselves off, they got started. We put them into a collaborative group so they worked together. Um, and, and then who needed me at that point right away. So we could get that, that group that were very uncertain, very unsure, started online with the work and, and, and they, took on, they took on the work for themselves. Then look at the middle group and then go and see the, um, the, the, the more experienced group. 
So you're looking at you're looking then as a teacher at, at, at coaching and mentoring, because you're looking at smaller groups. You're you're perhaps looking at one to one sessions because you've suddenly got more time within the learning space to be able to do that. Um, and you're targeting those individual small group. And then it's data led interventions and you're feeding back onto the students and the students are getting on with the work so that you can constantly look back at, at where they're doing. And what we train the staff to do is what we call plan for freedom. So whilst the students are making more choices about their own learning and management of their own learning behind that and underneath that is there's a real structure to, to what is happening there. So for a start, the teachers are putting the work, the, the teachers are going to the end to begin with, they're looking at what they want to achieve and they're writing assessment rubrics so that they're very clear for the students and what they want the students to do. Working back from that, they're then looking at how they resource that and where they put that on the learning platform. So they've got the resources, they've got the journey, they've got the things that they want the students to do. And then the students can start to take on those challenges, submit to the calendar that the, the teachers put in place around um, when work has to be submitted so that the, the assessment can happen and the students are then giving, giving that work in. Key to that is that whatever is put in front of the students, there is a response expected from them. So for example, if I do a video presentation to the students on a new topic, I'll follow that up with some sort of expected response, whether that's a, a, a quiz or it's an extended piece of writing or it's answering some extended questions, students will always have to give that response so that we know that they're all on the journey. And that allows us as teachers to see where the students are beginning to develop. So we have that planning for freedom underneath everything that goes on. But key in it is students feel that they're making more and more of the decisions. So you're starting to see, you're starting to see those changes evolve and develop. And that makes, that makes it a very collaborative learning space. And that co-construction and collaboration is key to the success of blended learning. So that, in a nutshell, is, is, is where we are. I hope we've done enough to inspire some questions. Um, and uh, I'm happy to take any questions that you may have. Thank you, Chris. Um, so if you could stop sharing your screen then and we can, we can see you again, that'd be great. We have a couple of questions coming in. Um, some of them are probably for you, some for me, some a, a joint answer. So the first one is the, the approach to blending learning seems to be, work very well for some subjects, such as biology, where parents can see homework, classwork and topics covered. This makes it very easy to parents to support their child if necessary. However, for other subjects, there is little visibility of any work covered at school via Microsoft Teams. Do LVS plan to ensure all subjects provide a consistent approach to blended learning? And is there a target date to implement such an approach? So if I start with that one, just to give you a bit of background, back in um, April 2019, which started all this, we had an inspection. And um, whereas we, we achieved excellent for pastoral care and well-being, for academic it was good. And the two recommendations for that, for not being um, excellent, was our use of technology and also our independence. And as you can see from a blended learning approach, it actually the two of them is nailed in one. They go hand in hand together. So we started our, our work on blended learning way back um, when we had first had the inspection. We didn't have the infrastructure at the time, so we had to get the infrastructure right first before we could move down this path. And we had a plan. And as you know, and I've said before, it was a two to three year plan and a gradual uh, implementation. And then suddenly COVID came along. And um, Dr. Slater last week mentioned it was something, a, a phrase, it was like putting a learner in a Ferrari. That's what it was like for us. We were, we were, we, there we go, we had to get on with what we call remote learning. 
not so much blended learning. It might have been there by default, but blended very, very different. So we are, we are now kind of catching up and we've got to strip it back and our journey's just really starting. So the answer to the question is, we are working on blended learning, getting consistency, but we're very much at the start of our journey and it will take some time to get us to a point where we're all singing from the same song sheet. Chris, would you like to add to that? Yeah, can, I, can I add to that? Uh, Christina, I think, I think that, you know, this is one of the things that's really important in this for parents and for students. And, and this was this was something that we got feedback early on. We went to a, an online sixth form and in our journey to, to establish our practice, we we looked at, first of all, what the teachers were saying, what the teachers needed. Then we were asking the students and the parents what what the issues might be. And one of the things that they said about a platform is is ensuring that it's set up in such a way that every subject, every subject looks the same when parents or students access the website. And things like not having too many clicks. So we had a three click rule around the material so that you were never far away from where you needed to be and you didn't get lost as you tried to navigate your way around the site. And I think that that's, I think that that, that is a really important starting point. The other, the other element of that is around planning because where, what do you do? And we, we identified four areas for teachers to think about when they were planning. Was the work um, instructional? If it was instructional, what did it look like? Was the work discursive and that they needed that, that interaction? Was it a collaborative space that was required for the work? And then what was the, what was the reflection like in the end of it? So we used those four areas to, to work with us, our, our staff on. What I will say is every subject lends itself to, to blended learning, every subject. And that comes down to how you, write, how you go out to the end, write the rubrics so that the students know where they're aiming for, and then you're, you're building and scaffolding the learning on the platform to allow the students to reach the end of those, of those rubrics. And I think that, so that, that behind the scenes setup is really, really important to ensure you're getting the best out of it. Thank you. Um, the next question is, could a syllabus be added to the Microsoft Teams where teachers list topics that will be covered at the start of each term? This would be useful for parents, especially if children miss schoolwork due to COVID. Yes, that's, that's something we can do. Um, what controls will the school put in place to prevent pupils from gaming and accessing social media on their device? Is there a target date for this? Well, as soon as the children come into school, they have to go through our own uh, BYOD. They, have, they, ha they sign an acceptable user policy and it's filtered. So there shouldn't be any of that going on. And if there is, uh, let me know because then something's going wrong. But if children are bypassing that and using their own 4G, 5G, then they are breaking the acceptable use policy. So that's just a, a little warning there. And we take that very, very serious as well. But they were just um, a couple of housekeeping ones there. So if you've got any questions that you'd like to, for, for Chris um, before we end this session, you can either send them through the chat or send them to me on my, on my email. I have my email here if you want to be more anonymous. Um, but what we'll do is, if there's no more questions coming through in the next 30 seconds or such, we will, we will say goodbye to Chris and move on to a, a general COVID update for LVS, which is a changeable feast. I was just explaining to Chris when he came and he said, how's it going? I said, from one day to the other, it's a changeable feast. So any more questions on blended learning and our LVS journey? Any more Chris, questions? Chris, can I just add one thing there on that last topic? There, there, there are obviously... Um, uh, programs that can be added to your network there for example net support where you can look at what students are doing and student activities and, and and such like so that you're always been you're always able to keep an eye on on what the students are doing um, and and the important thing for parents to understand is students engage and disengage in learning whether it's traditional learning or not at, at, at various different points. Um, the key to this, the key to this is the idea of planning for freedom. If you get your structures right, if you put in your, if you put in the right structures, the right dates, the right expectations underneath what you're giving the students to do, you start, you start to create the pace and rigor that is required of, of every single subject. It's not about just letting this, the biggest mistakes that people make is just, you're right, we're doing this, we let the students, you know, decide where they're going. We do allow the students to make decisions within a really tight framework. And we call that tight, tight framework planning for freedom. So I don't think we've got any other 
questions coming through. Uh, no, so I think we haven't. I was just looking to see if anything had come through. Anything else? Oh, oh, yeah, we do have one here. Here we go. Right, so we're finding that children are being told in lesson the prep will be on Teams. This sometimes causes a problem when the prep then isn't on Teams, when our child has time to do the prep, then it's added later. I'm concerned this means the children then can't switch off as they constantly have to monitor their teams over the weekends, holidays. This isn't great for pupils or staff who then got lots of queries and their downtime. Yeah, that's that's housekeeping for us here. We need to make sure it's put on then and there because we all know what it's like when we hear those pop-ups coming through very early in the morning, late at night and at the and weekends and holidays too. So I'm making a note of all these questions that will be sent through to me and we'll follow up with staff as well. I I, I think it's, I, we, we, we've we discussed this in the, in the past, Christine, where we've said that that initially, once once everything is set up, um, it, it, it really does support staff work-life balance. But there is a there is a need to set things up uh, properly. And, and in one of those, somebody mentioned earlier on in one of the questions about, you know, seeing seeing things over a longer period of time. And and one of the things that we did in our in our school, for example, was we put we put the whole year online very quickly, and teachers put their whole GCSE course online, for example, where students could see the whole the whole thing, which meant that there was never a that there was there was never a need for downtime. But just just an idea that we that we used was when we set up. A, a new piece of work. We actually set it up in minutes and there was X amount of minutes that were in school time and there were X amount of minutes that were for the students to do in their own time at home. So the concept was that we never set homework because homework, the concept of homework is it's something different from what you were doing in class or, but what we did was that the learning journey in school and the learning journey at home was seamless. So it was always there. To, for, for students to do. And they then had to plan their own time at home in the same way as they had to plan their time in school. And something that we did with students was we, we, we expected them to do that. If they turned up into a learning session, they would plan their time. They would say that this is what I'm looking to achieve at the end of this session. And then they would do a reflection on that at the end of each session. To do that, we had 100 minute lessons. We had 100 minutes of learning time. For that to happen. That's great. Thanks, Chris. I think the the questions have now dried up, but I'm sure there'll be more questions after the after the event. So if they come through, then uh, and we'll see you next week. So I'll pass them to you then as well. I'm more than happy to to respond to any questions. I I, the, I, I possibly rushed through that a little bit because I wanted to leave time for questions and 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 because it's quite often important for people to. Uh, to, to hear what we're doing, but also then to you know, organize, organize their own thoughts and, and ask those questions. I'm happy, Christine, to, to come back or to, you know, maybe at some point in the future, meet parents um, and, and go through some of this, this live. But for me, the key message is that blended learning will be transformational for every single child on a personal level. And, the ambition that you've got as a school is, is, is fantastic. And I, I'm seeing now more and more schools thinking like you're thinking because they want the very best outcomes for their students. And I think that this, part, this blended approach is, will work for you. I've seen it, I know it will. Um, and I think it's a really exciting journey. So thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Thank you. See you soon. Take care. Take care. Bye bye. So now we're going to move on to a general COVID update. So obviously the world is changing on a daily basis. I must admit the uh, lockdown decision at the weekend took me by surprise. I thought the tier, the local tier system was working well, but we are where we are. And as always, the LVS will continue and we'll embrace any changes that, that come to us. So just to reiterate some of the things that we've sent through on the COVID bulletin, there's a, a new way of doing it so that you can see what the updates are really quickly on a day-to-day -day basis as they occur. And the big one for us is obviously now with year seven, it's wearing masks when you're walking around school, when you're in public areas and you, you take them off for PE and in the classroom. But it's really important that children now from year seven upwards are wearing masks. 
Uh, we've tried to reduce the bubble sizes again. When we sent out the survey last week, we had some really good feedback. Can I just say thank you to all those parents that emailed me with your feedback? And as a result, what we've tried to do, especially in those years where there are option subjects and the it, trying to keep children separate is harder than the lower years, is to create friendship bubbles as well. So not only do they have their class bubbles, but their friendship bubbles. And with any system like this, we're choosing friendship bubbles. There are issues, we realise that. So if you have any concerns, then please contact Mr Curtis and I and he'll, he'll answer your queries. And it's just, it doesn't mean they can't mix with other people, but it just means they have to be more conscious of that metre apart or two metres apart from the next bubble as well. To, to reduce the number of children on site during the day as well, boarders are able to go back to their houses during the day, which is great. I think that's, that's lovely being able to go home during the day, but at break time and at lunch time and the sixth form when they have free lessons, they can go home and study in their houses too. We've also drawn up a pupil charter. We, we had a staff charter back in September just about how we expect staff to work in school to keep us all safe but now we've got a, chi a children's charter as well so they are going through it during LVS 1 and we are asking them to sign it to say that they they, they understand what our expectations are it's so important that um, we educate our children in the dangers of COVID-19 because um, some of them can be asymptomatic and, but they can spread it, as we know, even though the government says that the risk is low. And then we as adults and you as parents and grandparents are the ones that could possibly become more ill. We are also then, we do advise you if you're 16 plus uh, in school, if you're in the sick form, that to um, download the Test and Trace app because we will start having QR codes in school in those sick form areas where we can actually help track, test and trace as well. And remember, as, we, as I talk, you can always send questions through to the, the live chat or through to me or on my email here as well. Now, the big one for us was the, the restriction now on co-curricular clubs and that the, act, the regulation actually says that, um, you know, childcare doesn't stop. So our extended day in senior school and in the infant and junior school continues. But the sport especially and clubs are, we are restricted now that you can't do it. it has, as long as it's part of the normal school day, yes, but we are restricted, which is really disappointing. And I know a lot of schools, um, state and independent, are querying that. Um, but at, meanwhile, we have to do as we're told. OK, so we have to do as we're told. Mrs Cunniff has to do as she's told. So the survey results were really interesting and I posted those on the bulletin. Uh, uh, ironically, it was on the Friday we sent out the, the survey, the Thursday or the Friday, and then the government announcement was on the Saturday. And I actually thought, oh, I wonder if people's opinion would be different having heard about the national lockdown. But I watched the responses coming in over the weekend and it didn't really change. And what's for sure is that parents in the infant and junior school and year 11 want their children in school. They believe the best place for their children in school right up to the end of term, which is the 11th of December. And I totally empathise with that. We want the children here. It's great having the children here. But what we wanted to do was give parents the opportunity that if they wanted to go online for that last week, just to safeguard their families coming up to Christmas. We don't know what Christmas looks like right, right now and things will change again, no doubt, on a weekly basis. So what we do is we just keep watching, we listen, we look at what you want to do as well, because remember, we are a community. This is about how we work together. Um, and I think at the moment where we are here today that we will give parents the choice in that last week and, so, and we will deliver from school, but in the classroom and online for those other year groups as well. Strength of feeling was most of the sick form parents, 73% were in agreement of going online in that last week, 60% in years seven to nine, and it reduced down to 55% for years 10 and 11. But as we know, opinions will change. Some children are learning online because of their personal circumstances. So if you do have a worry about your family situation, you might have somebody who's ill within your family. It might be mental health issues, a number of reasons why you believe your child would be better off online. Then please do contact us because we'll make sure that you, you connect to the LVS Connected program and we get it right for your child and your family. But I do believe the best place to be for children, if they can, is here together. It's amazing. If you hear them laughing and shouting and playing and they're out on the field and they're in the lessons, it's a lovely atmosphere in school and children need to be together to learn. So we've got to keep them here as much as we can, but taking into consideration your personal circumstances as well. The one little, uh, little gripe I've got is, is about self-isolation. Now, if you have been told that 
your child has to self-isolate and it might come from school or it might be that you've had contact outside of school you have to self-isolate and we do know there are instances where children who have been asked to self-isolate are not doing so we don't set the rules the government sets the rules and it puts us in a very very difficult position because not only does it endanger our school community um, we are not well parents families are not doing as the government are asking so it's really really important as well so just going on to the next slide then um, with um, with the school update we uh, we finished the year seven scholarships that was really well done to everybody so we're processing them at the moment we'll get them out as soon as we can and sick form scholarships the closing date for those is the 29th of September on Thursday this week we have options evening and it's an options evening with a difference so rather than me being here Mr Pagrick will be here and he will be delivering the options evenings to GCSE and A level letters have already gone out about that and then we've had our heads of department and department members filming what their subjects are like at GCSE and A level and you'll be able to click on them and watch the departments present directly to you your own bespoke program so that's going to be really interesting to see how that works out our year 11 they're gearing up for their GCSE maths paper in January and they've got their mock exam in um, on Wednesday so they've got paper one and paper two on the same day really busy day for year 11 but really worthwhile because we'll know where you're going to be first papers on the 7th of January and just bearing in mind if you're intending to go anywhere travel and that includes our international pupils over Christmas you have to bear in mind that quarantine period before you can come back to school because the maths exam has to be sat here on school site so please any worries any concerns or any confusion on that please contact us we will be holding a remembrance service on the 11th of December and our staff will be delivering it from the, from this studio and we have an arrangement of a vow to the my country by one of our graduate boarding assistants um, Lawrence Eves who is a musician and he's created a, his own arrangement so we can't wait to hear that uh, on this really amazing occasion we will you know we can't be out in the street together as a school but we will be online together in on remembrance day now we're always looking at catering provision as well and so we went at the start of term with some year groups going in for catering and some taking baguettes and obviously there was the ups and downs of that and then we managed to get everybody having a hot meal but it was takeaway and disposables which was semi-okay to start with because it was a bit of a novelty and the weather was good but we're actually after this I'm meeting with our catering department because we're seeing if we can improve the provision even more to have a sit down experience with proper plates and cutlery um, in a warmer environment for all the children so I might have a bit of an update later on this afternoon if not on Monday morning how we can adapt and change as well so there's lots of good fun going on as well so on Friday the 20th and I'm skipping to Friday the 20th it's football shirts to school which will be in aid of uh, raising awareness for bowel cancer and also next Friday it's LVS Perspectives 12 and that's on sleep the um, sleep issues now I have met so many people who are having problems with sleep children and adults and I think there's many of you there who might be watching this think yep I wake at two o'clock in the morning and I lie there hour after hour and then I probably just doze back off to sleep and then it's time to get off again so we have our sleep specialist coming in talking to us for LBS Perspectives 12 Tracy Hannigan uh, next Friday as well so then moving over just to a couple of other things and when I've when I've done that then we can start the questions coming through so please send them through on the chat or you can email me directly is that we have children in need and that is um, next um, next week as well that's coming up really quickly so the BBC are running an initiative called um, and it's about the collective ages ages of your family so what we thought we'd do is we would add up all the ages of all our children and all our staff by years days and months as it will stand on the 13th of November and run a competition for parents and pupils um, and staff if they want to take part to win some vouchers so the first prize will be for a 30 pound voucher for a pupil and a 50 pound voucher for adults and it's just to guess what are collective ages and just to give you a couple of clues if you look on the staff list on the website you'll see all the staff that we've taken into consideration and we currently have 795 pupils ranging from four years old to 18 19 years old at the other end no more clues than that so if you want to take part in that we sent out how you take part on school post you click reply you can put in your 
um, your guests and your donation to children in need. So we want to really raise money for that and also a Mufti Day as well. And then I think there's just one more other slide there now is if you remember in lockdown, Mr Curtis and I was running quizzes for the NHS. We had two. They were so funny and entertaining. And as we're in lockdown, where else do you have to go on November the 14th, Saturday 14th of November? I'll tell you where you can go. You can come online and take part in the PTA quiz run by Mr Curtis and I again, and uh, all donations uh, will be to the PTA. Now with the Zoom, there are only 100 places, and I think we've had a few take up already, so you need to get onto Claire Gedge and book your place on the quiz. It's a family night, it's hilarious, it's really good entertainment, so, so please come along to that. Okay, so here are the questions at the moment. Will the new COVID updates tell us how many cases are presently in school? How many are self-isolating? I know originally you were only releasing information if it directly affected our children, but it would be good to get a weekly picture of the situation. I totally agree with you. In fact, I haven't got the, the bulletin out. We actually have a little statement to put to update that bulletin today. So where we are at the moment, and Mrs Collins will probably tell me off if I've got this wrong, but we have Year 13 back now. So we have Year 12 will be coming back uh, Monday, I'm saying that on the top of my head. Although in Blenheim at the moment, we've got 12 and 13 are isolating together and they will come out of isolation together. It just makes that boarding easier for us with the two, the two year groups um, boarding there together at the moment. So we, touch wood, will have a full school on Monday. And I say touch wood, uh, we should do. So we do have a, a couple of children who are positive and who are self-isolating at the moment and we currently have four members of staff who are positive who are self-isolating too. But everybody's fine, everybody is you know, very varied symptoms which is incredible you know that I know they're going to add to those those symptoms of COVID-19 but it's quite quite amazing quite interesting but luckily everyone is safe happy and healthy even though they're at home. Okay, so the next one is, is the after school prep period um, still in place? Thank you, I'll keep dashing to one side because the camera's just slightly out of my, um, blocking the words there. So yeah, after school prep. So we are we are a boarding school so we don't shut. So uh, thank you Ben for now putting in, in my line of vision. That's absolutely fantastic. So we are still a boarding school, we're still open, we still have extended day. So infant and junior school, senior school, we're here, the prep sessions are running and it's uh, it's only that we can't, um, we offer that service, we just can't run co-curricular when the children could be at home. I hope that makes sense. It's a little bit on the confusing side, but that's what we're doing. So your children are looked after, they are here um, until you pick them up. Okay, can there be more than one meal option to choose from? Would it be possible for children to order first thing in the morning to reduce food waste? Right, so the meeting I had yesterday and the one I'm about to go into the moment was because we're redu because we can't do a lot of co-curricular, we can we have got more space for, for food and sitting down and having a proper meal. So what we're doing is we're looking at the space, we're looking at the logistics, and then we're looking at the options as well, because it would be lovely to revert back to the menus that we used to have before uh, COVID. Now there are always going to be some restrictions, so it's always going to have to be sell, um, served by the members of the catering team, it can't be self-serve, but we are looking at increasing the options. Um, it is something we feel that we can do now because we're moving into winter and we want to make sure that our children are really uh, fed well and, and not going home hungry because it is a long day after all. Uh, and looking at first thing in the morning, yeah, that's another option where the pre-ordering is a good idea as well because I know some schools do that, so we're looking at all those options. Um, another question here, on the subject of catering, will there be a widening of the offering? There, were, there appears to be enough veg there never appears to be enough vegetarian provision. Um, my daughter had five carrots for lunch on Tuesday, not really going to fuel her day. I am generally happy with the standard of food, but choices are not as wide as before. I understand there may be issues uh, such as the salad bar, for instance. There are. Now, having just carrots for lunch isn't good at all. That's not going to see you through the day at all. So we are aware of it. We are adapting and changing and we will make some progress on that hopefully today and I can feed back to you as well. So I'm just going to check that nothing's come through on my email. Remember, if you want to um, uh, send through a question, you can do it. I do have one coming through on my phone here as well, so I'm just going to do that. So um, will it be a casual day if they have sport on that Friday? If they have. Yes. Yeah, so um, if they, they can they can come in in their own clothes 
or come in, depending on when the PE lesson is, come in on your PE, but bring your own clothes with you or vice versa. Um, so it, you can bring both on that day if you've got sport. All right. So that's a good one that's coming through on there. Anybody else? Any other questions? And then the following week, we'll have another um, general update. Uh, LVS Perspectives 13 on the 20th. Now, if there are other topics that you would like us to address, if there anything that's worrying you, or anything you think is a school we need to address, we can get speakers in to talk to you like you've been talked to today. The children have had Carl Hotwood talking about online safety today. He was with us between 11 and 12 o'clock today. That was, that's also on Facebook Live if you want to watch that as well. But this is a good opportunity for us to be together as a community and you to raise any concerns or observations because we learn together, uh, we're in it together. So I'm going to give it another 10 seconds to see if any more questions coming in. I'm looking into the control room to see if anything's coming in and they're shaking their heads right now. But if they do come in afterwards, please email me and I will come back to you. So I hope you have a lovely weekend and um, see you next week. Bye. Mm -hmm.